People think that the marriage was just a facade and people are always wondering when it stopped being a physical relationship. And some say that that was when Franklin had his famous affair in 1917, 1918 with Lucy Mercer, who was Eleanor's secretary. I don't think that was the end of their sexual relations. Myself, I think that they got over that. It was a brutal moment for Eleanor. It was a betrayal. But he did not want a divorce. He stayed with her and they rose above it. I think the turning point in their physical relations was most certainly polio in 1921 when Franklin was 39. Let's not underestimate what polio does to a relationship. Franklin needed an attendant around the clock. He needed somebody to help him stand up, to, to help him dress. He couldn't move. Um, his legs did not work. He needed time too after that dreadful catastrophe. So for the next seven years, he disappeared often. He actually spent more time in the South than at home. And he was with his secretary, younger, charming, smiling woman, Missy Lahand. And there is no doubt that Missy Lahand was a romantic relationship. She adored him. She called him FD, my FD. I don't think he was in love with her, but he loved her. He treasured her. She had the patience to sit next to him when he was down in the south, swimming, fishing, putting up with the mosquitoes, putting up with the cold nights, just being beside him, making him more cheerful, making him feel like a man again. Eleanor, she was fast, she was manic. She had to look after the kids. It was mostly um, while he was in the South, Eleanor immersed herself in the women's division of the Democrat Party. Women had only just got the vote. This was the Roaring Twenties. This is when women bobbed their hair, started to smoke. When professional women started to really do things, they were Eleanor's friends. She became the most important person in the Dem woman in the Democrat Party, um, had a huge influence on women voters. Franklin owed his election in part to Eleanor. Franklin loved the Hudson Valley. He loved the river, the landscape, his house. His house was his mother's house. It was as if for him, it was as if it were his house. He loved it there. Eleanor didn't. She always felt she was in his mother's house. So um, in the 20s, after Franklin had polio, when he was going more and more to the south with Missy, one day they were having a picnic. Eleanor, Franklin, the kids, the gang. They always had a gang of friends around them. And Franklin suggested that Eleanor and two lesbian friends, they were a couple, build a cottage, which they called Val Kill, and that Eleanor could live in it whenever he wasn't in town. You see, they had the, the New York house. Eleanor, who had, you know, such an aristocratic background, uh, never had a home of her own until she was 40. Val Kill became her home. And um, after Franklin died, she mostly lived at Hyde Park herself in, in this home. The affection that Americans feel for Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt goes beyond politics. It's so many things, I think. Franklin was extraordinarily eloquent. And to perpetuate the integrity of democracy. He had to stand at a podium holding tight to the, holding himself up with braces on his legs, but he used his head a great deal for emphasis, and he had a wonderful face, a marvelous smile, and warmth. Eleanor had such a smile, such a warm, modest, familiar kind of presence, both in her My Day columns, in her autobiography, in her presence. People, she knew how to make people feel relaxed and they didn't have any pretensions. They just invited everybody to the White House. They genuinely cared about people. Their politics was not about them. They believed in public service. They believed in helping others and people could see that.